So, hey, you found a great mod pack and you want to share it with your friends. You could use some help on that boss fight or someone to do all those farm builds so you can explore. Am I right? Minecraft is just more fun with friends. There are several options for setting up a server and they each come with trade-offs. In this video are four different ways you can do that, ranging in cost, performance, and your own time and effort. Everybody needs that friend who's willing to set up the server. That can be you. I'm going to show you three free ways to set up a server and one paid. If you want a server that's easy to set up, always on, high performing, with automated backups, 24-7 tech support will do all the hard stuff like fixing broken worlds, DDoS protection, and one-click mod pack installation. You can have that in less than five minutes. You can sign up for a server from a trusted Minecraft hosting provider like Apex Hosting. If you do, use my link, jangro.com Apex, which supports the channel. Thanks for your support, and thanks to Apex for sponsoring this video. Toward the end of this video, I'll go through that entire setup and show you just how easy it is. I've got several options for you to decide for yourself. The first method is to download the mod packs server files and manually set up the server on the same PC that you're playing Minecraft on. This is not my favorite method, but I'm going to show you how to do it. At any point you're like, no thanks and want to tap out, feel free to skip ahead. All right, let's do it. First, just go to the CurseForge page for the mod pack you want to install. I'm going to do Valhelsia 6. We need to dig down a bit to find the server files. So here, click on the Files tab, find the version you want to install, and click on that. Then click on Additional Files down the bottom. There, you will find the server file. Click the little three-dot menu and Download File. You'll find that file in your download history. I'm going to drag that to my desktop. Here it is on my desktop. We need to extract it. Double-click on it. Say open for this warning. And here we have the contents of the zip file. Click extract all, extract to whatever location you want. I'm going to do that in my desktop. So this folder here contains the server files. And to start it, we need to run one of these server start.batch files. So the .bat is Windows, .sh is Linux. You can just double click on this server start file right here. I'm going to recommend opening up a terminal window to do that in. And to do that, the easiest way is to right click on this folder, either on the desktop or in Explorer and click open in terminal. That opens this Windows PowerShell pointing to this directory. If we type dir, we can see all the files here. And now I'm going to start typing server start dot bat and hit tab. It will, auto it will automatically complete the file name for you. And now we just hit enter. To run this, it's going to just start to download all of the Minecraft files and then a bunch of other files. It's gonna go through a pretty long process here. It'll take a minute or so, but then you'll see that it failed to load eula.txt. So we have one more step to do, press a key. Now we need to edit the eula.txt file. There are a few ways to do that. We can just back in the folder and you can see some more files are created here. We just double click on this. That will open up Notepad. We need to change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. Save it. We can close that out. And now we come back here and run server start dot bat again. This will take quite a while, especially if it's creating a new world. And at some point, it'll just stop. And this is your server console. So you can type right down here at the bottom, like server commands, set me as the operator. So we take a look at Valhalla 6, click multiplayer, add server. Now when it is running on your own computer, you just use localhost as the server address. And here it is right here. You can kind of watch over here to the right when I join the server and see my user has connected. And here we are in our server. So there you go. Now, if you have people on your local network that you want to allow to connect, you have to give them your local network IP address. A way to get that is to open up a PowerShell window and type ipconfig.exe and hit enter. And this address right here is the IPv4 address of your local computer in the network. If your friends are outside your network, you'll need to give them your external IP address. You can go to a browser, use a website like What's My IP to get your IP, IPv4 address. Give that to your friends. You'll also need to open up your firewall to port forward the Minecraft port to your server. That's a bit beyond the scope of this video. There's lots of resources if you want to Google that. Now it's important to note that this server is not always on. If your computer's not on, your server won't be running. This always has to be here running. To close the server, just hit Control C in this window. It'll stop the server. And to start it again, we have to come back here and type server start.bat. All right, let's look at an issue you might run into, which is that some mod packs 
like prominence to RPG doesn't have a .bat file. It, they have .ps1 files. This is a different batch language that is specific to Windows PowerShell. And I think there was a recent update with Windows that made this not work by default. So here I am in the prominence 2 folder. I downloaded it all in the same way, extracted it as I did for Valhelsia 6. But if we try to run start.ps1, we get an error message. It's very cryptic, but basically Windows has security policies in place that prevent us from running .ps1 files. Here's how to fix that. These next steps we need to run in PowerShell as an administrator. So you click on the Windows menu, search for PowerShell, and right click and choose the run as administrator option. And now we have a PowerShell window that is open as the administrator. We need to find our way back to the directory where we installed Prominence 2 RPG. An easy way to do that is to right click on it in Explorer and copy as path. And then in the PowerShell window, CD, and then Control V to paste that in here. So I'm gonna run a few commands. These are all listed in a blog post that is linked to in the description. So you can just copy and paste things. The first one is get execution policy dash list. And the issue here is that the local machine and current user are not allowed to execute script files, these PS1 files. To fix that, we run this command, set execution policy dash execution policy remote signed. We we'll get prompt, yay, yes to all. And now if we run this get execution policy list again, we can see the local machine is remote signed. If we go back here and try again, you can see that it worked. I'm doing this as the non-admin user, which I think matters. Now, I have spaces in my prominence 2 folder, which it doesn't seem to like. Let me just fix that quickly. I need to change to this new directory that I just created. There we go. Now, this script is a little more advanced. I don't have to edit the EULA file. I can just type, I agree. It takes care of the EULA for me, and we're off and running. Okay, the server's up and running. Another issue that you might have is if you don't have Java installed. And you can test that by just typing Java dash dash version. And you should see something here. I have version 21 loaded by default. If you don't get something here, or maybe it's the wrong version, like you have too old of a version of Java for the mod pack that you're running, you'll need to install an updated version of Java. My favorite one is Adoptium. I'll link to it in the blog post in the description. So that was pretty complicated, right? That's about as complicated as it gets, and it gives you a good idea of what's going on behind the scenes no matter where you're running a server. Another way, if you do want to run Minecraft on your own computer, if you insist on doing that, is to use AT Launcher. Now, AT Launcher is a launcher like CurseForge, Prism. I don't talk about AT Launcher very often in videos, but it does have a really great unique feature, which is to run a server. So go to atlauncher.com slash downloads, grab whatever version you need, probably the Windows setup, and run it. And it's gonna look like this when you start it up. There's a servers tab over here, which allows you to actually run servers from AT Launcher. It takes care of all the stuff we just did manually. Over here in the servers tab is where our servers will show. It says we need to install one in the packs tab. We'll go here, go to CurseForge. Let's search for prominence, prominence to RPG. And instead of a new instance, which is what we would play on, we need to click the create server button. But yes, it's downloading the server pack, just like we did manually. We go to the servers tab and click the launch button. And the exact same thing happens here because it is also running the start PS1 file. So just like before, we need to set the execution policy. I reset it so we, you could see that the same thing was going to happen. So if we go back to here and set the policy to remote signed, yes to all. Now we can see that the local machine now has these, this new execution policy. Now we should be able to run the server. There we go, same process as before. If I agree, this is the prominence to startup script. Other mod packs will look different. Now our server's starting up. So that's a good deal easier. If we were using a pack that uses a .bat instead of .ps1, this process is just like 20 seconds. It still has all the same issues that the manual method has, which is it's running on your own computer. It's not on all the time. This needs to be running. You need to do port forwarding and firewall stuff to let your friends play from outside of your network, but much simpler. The next method is actually very similar to the first one where you're setting up a server, this time probably on Linux on a hosted server that's out on the internet, not running on your own computer. And that's the important part, that it is not your computer, it's not inside your network, and it's available to the public internet. There's lots of hosting services like Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, 
Oracle Cloud has a free tier, and I go through it in excruciating detail, step by step, in a blog post that I'll link to in the description. Maybe I'll do a video on this. Let me know in the comments if that would be helpful. But I literally go through the whole thing step by step in this blog post. What you end up with is a completely free, very powerful server. So if you're inclined to set up a Linux server hosted somewhere else, this is a really, really powerful and free solution. In this post, I go through all of the setup process for Oracle free tier, setting up Java, installing Minecraft on the server. And in this example, I use Prominence too. That solution requires that you set up your own backups, do your own startup scripts, maintain the server all by yourself, do updates all by yourself. If you run into problems, there's no help. So you're on your own. And finally, if you've got a little bit of money to spend, maybe you can share the cost with your friends. You can sign up for a hosted Minecraft service. There are many of them. I use Apex Hosting. They're a partner of the channel. So if you sign up through Apex, use my link, jangura.com slash Apex, that helps support the channel. Let me just give you a quick look at what's involved with that. Just go to Apex Hosting. Again, use my link, click get started, choose the server you want to run. Six or eight is usually good for a good size mod pack. Rule of thumb, I generally like to get a gigabyte per person that's going to be playing simultaneously. And here you can search for the mod pack you want to install. Dominance um, 2 RPG, click continue, go through the checkout process, and that's it. After just a couple of minutes, your server will be set up. You'll get that login information, like I mentioned, and you, this is the control panel. You can see Prominence 2 is already here. The server is running. Just copy your subdomain. So if we go into Prominence 2, add a server, and here we go. We've got our Prominence 2 server running on Apex. Easy as that. The benefit of using a hosted Minecraft provider is that you've got online access. It's always running. You have 24 seven support, help you out with any issues. You can change your server, change over to any mod pack you want to play, and you can get automatic backups just in case something goes wrong. And if something really goes wrong, you've got 24 seven support. Even though I can do all this stuff myself, I'm a software engineer. I've got an Oracle cloud free tier server available to me, I would rather spend my valuable time playing the game or making videos than doing server maintenance. Anyway, there you have it. There's four ways to set up a Minecraft server, play modded Minecraft with your friends. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or hit me up in my Discord server. All the links are in the description. We'll see you next time. I appreciate you.